Spotted Lanternfly Training, brought to you by Dedicated Systems Incorporated. Uh, the Spotter and Lanternfly, made for our value drivers of Dedicated Systems. Uh, as you can see in this video here, uh, they look actually very beautiful, but unfortunately they are an invasive species uh, that we'll learn more about in this training, and you as a driver need to know about. The, invasive, the Invasion of the Pesky Spotted Lanternfly, Part 1. Uh, the spotted lanternfly was discovered in Pennsylvania in 2014. Entomologists from the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, PDA, estimate it had been here since about 2012 based on the condition of old weathered egg masses. Spotter and lanternfly is native to parts of Asia. It was accidentally introduced into South Korea in the 2000s. It spread rapidly across the country where it has become a serious pest of grapes. The spotted lanternfly adult is approximately one inch long and a half inch wide when it is at rest. They have red hind wings which have shown which which they show when they are startled or when they fly. But most of the time the adults rest with their forewings folded over their backs. These forewings are gray mob with black spots. The spotter lanternfly, the spotted lanternfly, does not bite or sting people. Instead, they have a long, thin, piercing mouth part called a proboscis, yeah, say that three times fast, that they insert into the trunks, stems, or leaves of the host plants and feed on the sap. Spotted lanternfly feed in swarms and greatly diminish crop yields. As they feed, the spotter lanternfly excretes copious amounts of partially digested tree sap called honeydew, which is high in sugar content. The sticky substance quickly accumulates under where the insects feed and the black sooty mold grows on it. The mold develops an unpleasant odor and the honeydew can attract stinging insects. The sooty mold also can result in decreased photosynthesis for affected vegetation. The spotter and lanternfly feeds on more than 70 plants, including grapes, hardwoods, and apples. As you can see on this slide, uh, the number one exporter of hardwoods, over 19 billion annually, hops, vegetables, landscaping, nursery stock, and related services, all are affected for Pennsylvania. Part two of this training is the quarantine zone and the life cycle. When the presence of the spotter lanternfly was confirmed in 2014, the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture set up a quarantine area. The quarantine is designate, designed to safeguard Pennsylvania by slowing the spread of spotted lanternflies, assuring our trading partners and giving science and technology time to advance. As these insects spread, the quarantine area correspondingly grew and now encompassed most of the southeastern Pennsylvania. Chances are it will expand again. Note that spotted lanternfly are not uniformly distributed within the quarantine zone. Some areas are heavily infested, while other areas have few, if any, spotted lanternflies. The quarantine order states that no one may intentionally move or any viable life store stages of the spotter lanternfly from within the quarantine area to outside. This means that residents and workers should inspect any items they may have, the insects or egg masses that may have the insects or egg masses before moving the items also on our semis. Uh, to comply with the quarantine, it helps to understand the spotted lanternfly life cycle. Note that multiple life stages may be present at one time. For example, in early fall, you may see fourth instars adults and even egg masses at the same time. Uh, April through July, flightless nymphs have hatch and grow. The nymphal stage are called instars. Every time a nymph sheds its skin, it may become, uh, it may become the next instar. First through third instars all look similar. 
with black bodies and white spots, but each instar is bigger than the last. First instar nymphs are, are tiny. They are the size of a tick, but move more, much more quickly and have a different shape. July through September, the fourth instars emerge. Fourth instars are bright red and white spots and black bodies. They are strong jumpers and often jump away when approached or prodded. Uh, starting in late July, the fourth instar nymphs transition into adults. Adults feed on woody parts of plants and can be present in very high numbers. The females lay eggs September through December. Each female can lay multiple egg masses. Each egg mass has between 30 to 50 eggs. Uh, the spotted lanternfly are great hitchhikers. Adults can hop and fly, and both adults and nymphs are good at clinging to most surfaces, including the outside of moving vehicles. Thus the reason why it's important for us as our drivers to know how to spot a spotted lanternfly and its egg masses, which could be on any flat surface. Therefore, the quarantine restrictions apply to a wide variety of goods. Private citizens within a quarantine area who want to move any items outside the quarantine zone should complete the compliance checklist and take it with them when they move the items. Uh, as a driver as well, uh, if we are picking up a load in the quarantine area, the shipper will have paperwork saying that they attest to being clear of the spotted lantern fly. At dedicated systems, our business regularly moves items within the quarantine zone or across the boundaries of the quarantine zone. Our company vehicles must carry a spotted lantern fly permit. It looks like this in the picture. This permit indicates that you as a dedicated systems driver has been trained and has inspected the vehicle and its contents and that they are free of the spotted lantern fly. From program inception until April of 2019, the PDA issued hang tag and decal permits, in, but in April of 2019, the PDA transitioned to a paper permit. A copy of the paper permit should be kept with the registration packet or in the permit book. If you, have, if you do have a hang tag permit, they can be displayed on the dash while the vehicle is parked. Please remove while in motion. You can also keep hang tags inside the truck with the registration packet or permit book if asked by um, an official. Decal permits can be placed on the driver door panel or kept inside the truck with the registration packet or permit book. Drivers need to show the assigned permit if they are stopped at a checkpoint. This permit training video and what we can do to help eradicate these pesky insects as part three. The most important action in the fight against the spotted lanternfly is to stop it from spreading, both within the quarantine zone and especially beyond the quarantine zone. This is where you and your fellow workers at Dedicated play a critical role. First, you need to be aware of the life stages of the insect that could be presented so that you know what to look for when you inspect vehicles and equipment. Notice the fourth instar nymph is red, black, and white in colors, which carries over to when they become a flying adult with a distinctive red area on its underwing. Know when you are in an infested area. Check the PDA Spotted Lanternfly website to see if you are in a quarantine zone. Remember that spotted lanternflies are not uniformly distributed within the quarantine zone. Some areas are heavily infested while other areas, few if any, have the spotted lanternfly. If you live in an infested property or visit infested properties for work, be aware that you, you your vehicle, and your equipment can harbor hitchhiking insects. Check for them frequently. Do not park under trees or tree lines. If possible, spotted lanternflies tend to congregate in trees. Not only does parking near trees increase the possibility of hitchhiking, but the insects will coat anything below them, including your vehicle and equipment, with sticky honeydew. If you are simply driving through a quarantine area and there is no need to stop, don't stop. But if you do need to stop 
for any period of time, such as taking your half hour break or a 10 hour break in a quarantine area, inspect your vehicle prior to use. They do request residents to store vehicles and equipment inside. And if they don't have a place to store them inside to place a tarp over the equipment. Do not leave vehicles open, shut your windows, trunks, hatches, and tailgates. Insects can and will enter any portals. Be sure to scan the interior of your vehicle and kill any insects you find before leaving the area. If you are in a heavily infested area, tuck your pant legs into your socks to prevent adults from crawling inside your clothing. Before entering your vehicle, please make sure that none are resting on your person. And please swat or smash as many as you can. Um, they will not harm, harm people or animals, so feel free to kill them wherever you are. Chipped woody debris is safe to move. Putting wood through a chipper to produce one inch chips has been proven to disrupt the egg masses so they don't, do not hatch. Before moving equipment, or supplies from an infested area, regardless of whether they were stored near a tree line, inspect for a dis inspect for and destroy any egg masses. Spot and lanternflies lay egg masses on just about any handy surface, fence posts, semi trucks and trailers, cinder blocks, rusty metal, and more. From mid September through spring, spotted lanternfly egg masses are the number one way this pest is transported, therefore it is important that you search for and destroy egg masses on your semis and equipment before you move them. The Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture and Penn State Extension are closely tracking where spotted lanternflies are found. If you see what you think is a spotted lanternfly or spotted lanternfly egg masses, please take a picture of it if you can, kill it, and report it on the, the Penn State Extension website or call a spotted lanternfly hotline. If you find it outside of the quarantine zone, it would be helpful if you preserve it in alcohol for easier verification. Uh, part four is search and destroy the egg masses. Uh, the spot and lanternfly lays columns of eggs side by side. There can be as many as 30 to 50 eggs per mass, which is pretty impressive. Uh, the overall length of the egg mass is usually about one inch. Always remember that egg masses in adults pose the greatest risk of, for hitchhiking. The female covers the egg in a gray putty like covering. At first the covering is shiny, but then it dries and cracks over time. This picture was taken um, four months apart. You can see how the covering has deteriorated. Females may not cover all eggs as you can see in these two egg masses. Can you see the egg mass? There it is. Can you see them? There they are. Can you see them? Can you see these? Can you see it? Can you see them? Okay, so the the gypsy moth egg masses have a similar appearance to the spotted lanternfly. Many of the time surfaces, many of the same surfaces are used by both species. The covering for gypsy moth is more fibrous and generally tanner in color. Gypsy moth eggs are more spherical than spotted lanternfly eggs. Feel free to destroy gypsy moth egg masses as well. What should you do when you find egg masses? You can Practice mechanical scrape control by scraping and destroying the egg masses. If you scrape the egg masses into a container of rubbing alcohol, that will kill them. Then double bag them and throw them away. You can also smash the eggs. Here's a video of how to do it. As you can see, he scraped it off, put it in a baggie that has some um, hand sanitizer in there, or also rubbing alcohol, and... Uh, Basically, that'll take care of them. Uh, part five, what residents who live in these quarantine areas are doing. Uh, there are several methods, as you can imagine, uh, the spotter and lanternfly, such as tree trapping and tree, tree banding that is depicted in this video. 
bands are sticky tape uh, bands on trees that can trap spotted lanternflies and are especially effective in trapping the immature nymphs. Um, using sticky bands is a chemical free way of killing these invaders. However, they can be also capture other creatures, including benefit, beneficial insects and occasionally a bird or a small animal. Uh, you can purchase sticky bands from several commercial sites and you can make your own bands. Uh, the spotter and lanternfly's favorite food, especially in the adult its life stage, is the invasive tree Elanthus altissima, also known as the tree of heaven. Be sure to, not to kill the sumac or the black walnut as they look very similar to the tree of heaven. If this tree is available, spotted lanternflies will prefer, prefer, pre preferentially feed on it. Uh, we can use this attraction to our advantage by using the tree of heaven as a trap tree. Um, to follow this method, you must first kill most of the Tree of Heaven trees, uh, leaving just a few to serve as trap trees. Tree of Heaven trees can be, the, can be male or female. They try to leave only male trees. Uh, female trees pro proficiently, prolifically produce seeds, several hundred thousand each year. So prioritize killing female trees, then apply a systematic insecticide to remaining uh, heaven uh, trees of heaven this the insecticide is absorbed into the living tissue of the plant in late summer and fall the adult spotted lantern flies will move to the tree traps when the spotted lantern flies feed on the trees they ingest insecticide and die insecticide recommendations can be found on the spotted lantern fly homeowner management guide online and at your local extension office always read the label before applying an insecticide. Um, there is a systematic and, and contact options for insecticides. Uh, definitely appreciate you guys looking at this video. It's important. I would recommend that you please uh, take the quiz, uh, sign in. There will be a uh, there will be a place for you to take that quiz online. Either you can do it in the office, we'll have a computer set up for you, or you can do it uh, with your smartphone. But please uh, sign in to it. I will put a link in this video as well, where to go. Uh, if you could, please do that. Uh, this, this is a, a pesky little animal and really appreciate it if you can uh, help and do your part when traveling through these quarantine areas to make sure that they do not get out of quarantine. And if you get a chance, why not s smash a few bugs? Well, I appreciate it. My name is Josh at Dedicated Systems.